So here I have one pound of red kidney bean that I just washed and had some water to the pot. Um, this is how it looks. And I'm using one pound. All right. So to the peas and water, also beans, yeah. I'm gonna add three cloves of garlic. All right, I split it in two, split it in half. Anyways, we're gonna go ahead and add some fresh thyme and some pimento. I'm going to put the peas on the stove to just cook um, while I prep the pigtail. All right, so stay tuned. So here I have two pounds of salted pigtail and i wash them and now i'm just gonna add some water to the pot and just make sure everything is covered then i have to boil it twice because um it's very salty um the pigtail is cured in water salt and sodium nitrate so it's very salty and we have to make sure we cook off as much salt as we can but you don't want to cook all of the salt off the pigtail all right So I'm gonna go ahead and cover these, cook it for six minutes, then I'm gonna throw the water off and cook for another six minutes. This is how my pork tail is looking after six minutes of boiling. I'm trying to scald off the salt. Um, so this is how it's looking. I'm going to throw this water off. I'm gonna throw this off. Then I'm going to catch fresh water and boil it for another six minutes. All right. So here my beans were um, cooking while I was calling the pork tail. So now I'm just gonna add the pork tail to my beans because they're very tough guys so i'm about to pressure cook both the peas and the pigtail because they're both very tough so i'm gonna go ahead and pressure cook that that I had some water that I boiled in the kettle I'm gonna go ahead and cover the meat and the peas this is one thing when you're pressuring your meat you don't want to put too much water all right because if both things are cooked when you're finished you have to be removing all that goodness so you don't want to do that so I don't you know what do not cover all of it but just make sure you have enough water do not fill your pot too much but just make sure you have enough water i'm gonna go ahead and pressure cook this right now all right so now i'm gonna go ahead and make some dumplings for my stew peas we jamaican call it spinners here i have one cup of flour i'm gonna add some water to that and half a teaspoon of salt then I'm going to go ahead and mix everything together and your dumpling <laughs> dough should look just like this. I'm just going to put it to the side, cover it and just wait until I'm ready to use it. But yeah, we'll show you the other rest of the process. Just stay tuned. After 12 minutes of pressuring, I run some water over my pressure pot to make sure it's safe for me to open when it's time. So while everything was pressuring, I went ahead and prepped my seasonings. Um, here I have some garlic, all right, some garlic and some scallion, chop big, some thyme some onion, pepper, mm. all right, 
So I'm gonna use that first. And then over here, I have scallion, honey, and thyme that I'm going to use at the end. All right. While my pressure pot is being cooled, I'm just gonna go ahead and do my spinners. All right, so just go ahead and take a little piece. All right, like so. All right, then you're just gonna round it. I have the camera in my hand, so I'm not able to do it. Let me do it right here. All right, so you're just gonna put it in your hand middle and just roll it around roll it around all right until you get that perfect shape then you're gonna rub your two hands together with the dumpling all right like i said i have the camera in my hand guys and it's not supposed to be like this but yeah when you once you roll it in your hand all right just roll it that's not how I will be doing it, but because I have the camera in my hand, I'm not able to show it, but I'm just showing an example of what I'm gonna do. This will be between my two hands rubbing together and it will shape that spinner's shape, have that spinner shape, all right? So, yeah. So once you're finished, this is how your dumpling should be looking or your, like we call it in Jamaica, spinners. All right, all different shape and sizes. You're not gonna get everything the same size and shape, and that's fine. So this is how they are looking. So this is how the peas slash bean and pigtail are looking after being pressured for 12 minutes. The peas is soft and the pigtail, right amount of softness that I'm looking for. Um, whenever you're pressuring your meat, you don't want to pressure your meat for more, never, more than 15 minutes. So I did mine for 12 because I want to be able to control that texture of my meat and even the beans, all right? So these are perfect. That's the way I want it, all right? So I'm just going to put this back on the stove to cook and then had my seasonings and my coconut milk. Now I'm gonna carefully go ahead and remove some of this bean because I wanna go ahead and mash it. Then I'm gonna put it back in the pot. It's going to help with the thickness of the gravy. All right, so I'm gonna carefully remove some of the peas from the pot. I'm gonna go ahead and lower my heat. Then I have some water here that I just um, boil. I'm gonna go ahead and have that. All right, not too much, but just make sure everything is covered enough. And here I have some fresh seasoning, the onion, scotch bonnet pepper, thyme, garlic, and scallion. I'm gonna go ahead and have that to my pot. Mix everything up. Mix it in. Okay. And to that, I'm going to add my coconut milk. turn the heat up again to just get everything to a boil all right the smell is just incredible the coconut and all the um fresh ingredients it's just amazing all right 
So I'm just gonna cover this and bring it to a boil and I will show you the next step. I went ahead and had some black pepper, some honey and powder, and garlic powder. So I'm gonna mix that in. Then we're going to add our spinners. Okay, good. I'm gonna add those. So now you're gonna go ahead and lower your heat, cover your pot and allow it to cook for 20 to 30 minutes. Within 15 minutes, I end up adding the other rest of fresh ingredients um, to my pot. Sorry, I didn't get a chance to record it. So there you have it guys, Sasha's Stewie's recipe. I must say this dish turned out really well and I'm very happy that I was able to share it with all of you. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. Have a wonderful day.